you composing gloves here and today it's gonna be a short sounds basics video because in this series I just want to make the idea of bandwidth more clear um, so because it's a it's a really important idea because your all your plugins are gonna do this to you and they introduce filters and stuff called nonlinear it's called uh, phase distortion and you're gonna want linear filters for some things and not some things and it just becomes an important principle so here I have a saw wave I'm gonna make it a lower saw wave. And uh, you know, that's all great and dandy and fun. So what are you talking about when you mean bandwidth? So if I open up a multiband compressor and we're not talking about multiband compression right now, but I just wanna show you something. So this thing splits up whenever you send a signal and this goes for EQs and pretty much any other kind of processing that uses some sort of a filter. The EQ has to break up your frequency spectrum into chunks and then put them all back together. Uh, so it will process things individually. That's like what a multiband compressor specifically does though. So if I look over here, we can see that it split up our bands. Now this usually, you might be going, well, what's the big deal about that? This has an impact on your sound, like big time. You're going to be suffering from stuff that you didn't even know you were suffering from. And well, when I say big time, I mean, it really does impact your sound when I, but you're going to use your ears. And so you'll generally compensate for it. So some people have gotten through their whole careers without knowing anything about this. And that's, you know, that's totally fine. It's a legitimate way of doing it. I prefer to know what the crap's happening to my stuff so that I can, you know, make it sound better than yours. So if we come over here, uh, we have these three crossover networks. Your speakers will do this too. So you need to keep in mind that your speakers, if they have more than one driver, if they've got a little tweeter and they've got a, a woofer, they're going to split those frequency spectrum up and you suffer from the same problems. Ideally, you've bought speakers that are really good at reproducing this spectrum. Now, there's a point where your room outweighs how much you should pay for your speakers. So don't go like nuts. Generally, speakers, you'll be rather okay. Just pick a reputable brand and you know, you can even buy them used. Not a huge deal. So it's splitting up our frequency into the low, the mid, and the high. And if I mute these different bands, like this is only the high band. That's just the high band. If I unmute, here's the mid band. There's the mid band. I don't know what I was thinking right there. And here's the low band. And together, they form this. Now, this is great, but because it's using filters to break this apart, it's gotta, first of all, it's gotta break it apart and then put it back together. So if I switch my filter types here, you notice that the FIR filter sounds more full than the IIR filter. What's going on here? Well, each one of these filters right here has a cutoff. And a cutoff is, so whenever you, so this is an equalizer, and whenever you turn down part of the spectrum, so we turn down part of the spectrum, there's a cutoff introduced. And this cutoff usually is represented by this line, but this is like not how it is, man bro dude. So, it looks like this, but they're using different filters. There's a whole bunch of different kinds. There's bezel filters, uh, elliptical filters, elliptical. I believe that's what it was. So, and they have different poles and all this just jazz that goes, I might do a whole separate series just on filters, but this introduces phase shifting in your stuff. And so you need to be aware of this, that you could have one frequency get phase shift. And based on all the stuff we said before, you should now understand when I say that makes your signal add up, it makes it sum differently. Your phases will add together differently. So that changes the way your stuff sounds. That's important. So whenever you do this, and now there's a few other things. So first it's got to break this up. So it introduces all these filters and it's like, oh, it's going to be great though. It'll come out the same. It's like, no, it won't look it. We didn't even do anything in our... And our FIR filter sounds substantially better. Now the FIR filter is a digital filter and it actually introduces a delay in phase. And so it will shift everything over so it's all in phase again. This can have other problems though, like something called pre-ringing and stuff like that. This one's actually, I'm pretty okay with this one. But now normally it doesn't matter because if you're throwing down an effect, you, you're going to want it to sound different anyways. So there's like the point is mute. But... You need to be aware of this, that every time you go through something, you're breaking up your frequency spectrum, you're adding it back together, you're going to suffer the results. There's things called parallel EQ and serial EQ. Serial EQ, let's, let's, this is why you'd want to choose an EQ with less bands. So people are like, why don't I just use seven band EQs for everything or 14 band EQs? Well, the thing is you're breaking up your spectrum seven times, even if you use none of the bands, you must break it up using filters. And the sharper those filters are generally, so the faster the cutoff is, so, okay, 
here's here's the thing. So you see how this you see how this slope right here? This is called your um, transition band. And if you were to make it really sharp like this, you'd think, oh yeah, this is so great. But you introduce more phase shift when you do something like that versus this. Now I believe this is a serial EQ. So as to split it up, we have we have uh, seven bands. You must have seven. Therefore, if you want to manipulate seven bands, even if it's all flat, you've got to have separate different areas of your spectrum. And you can move these bands around and change them. It's really great. But it, it's still introducing these cutoffs. So that still, introduce, uh, that still introduces artifacts into your sound. If we were to, let me see, it, it's a pretty subtle thing. You see, it actually gets louder when it's off. So... That's that's a thing. Like it's it's a, it it adds up over time. That thing could change your mix. So I, I just want you to be aware of these things. I want you to know what they are. This idea of band width. And so when you have a wide band thing, every time you see something that uses a filter, this is the implication. So it splits it up into these bands. But then you can manipulate these bands and move them around. Now the sharper they are, you know, the more phase shift you'll generally get. If they are FIR filters, you won't get phase shift, but it will delay things. So if things originally happened after the attack, sometimes you'll hear it happen slightly before the attack. And now you got this weird problem with your spectrum. So... Uh, now the takeaway from this, if you're walking away going like, oh my gosh, I don't understand what you're saying, which I, I hope that's not what you're saying, but the takeaway is these, when you split up your frequencies into bands of frequencies, so whenever you read bands, so sometimes we'll say wide bands, that could cover from 20 to 20K. That's actually a pretty small band in the electronical engineering world, electrical, en electronical, electric, en Whatever, you know, the engineering world. So, because they deal with the whole spectrum. So, things that are like in the ultra high frequency range and like television station like range and above and beyond ultra high stuff. So, yeah. So, that's bandwidth. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Opposing